Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, thank you so much for having me. So today we will be talking about uh, service delivery of hepatitis on a community perspective. That is the that is um, what did the pandemic, how did the pandemic affect the healthcare system for people living with hepatitis and the challenges and the barriers that people living with hepatitis faced during the pandemic? And what would we have learned from these challenges to improve our healthcare system? So, um, Sierra Leone is a low income country located in West Africa which has um, experienced um, um, a decade of civil war and, and uh, the Ebola epidemic in 2014, which has caused a huge impact on the health service delivery. But till now, we're using this as an excuse to actually um, say, to actually um, say that's why we're still having challenges when it comes to um, service healthcare service delivery. So COVID-19 has definitely threatened the control of high burden diseases, which is like malaria, TB, HIV, and of course that is that of hepatitis, and I'll say diabetes and hypertension. But all we, we, we only see the magnitude of the COVID-19 impact um, for diseases like malaria, TB, and HIV, and not for hepatitis. And uh, basically, it's because Global Fund is the one that is uh, funding um, the country for these endemic diseases and not for hepatitis. So the resources available to conduct the magnitude of the impact of COVID-19 on these endemic diseases and not on hepatitis. So modeling studies have shown that um, most African countries are unlikely to, to meet the sustainable development goals targets for 2030. So um, we have in, in what can we say about the Sierra Leone healthcare system? We have a population of 7.8 million. So the Sierra Leone healthcare system is divided into two tiers. We have the peripheral health units and that of the secondary care. So we have up to 80 hospitals, both private and the public um, hospitals. And mostly they are condensed in Freetown, which is the capital city. So peripheral health units are um, subdivided into the maternal and child health post, which serves a population of 500 to 5,000. And community health post, which serves a population of 5,000 to 10,000. So the community health post is actually staffed by state and rural community health nurses, which um, um, and these nurses have low qualification or inadequate uh, qualification or education when it comes to service healthcare service delivery or in terms of managing. Um, people affected with hepatitis, giving them the right education or managing such cases. Of course, they will have to be referred to the secondary care facilities. And these health, when the service delivery when it comes to hepatitis is not done for free. So peripheral health units are mainly um, these are units where the marginalized communities or um, the poor go to seek health care service. So we also have the community health centers at chief dome level, which serve a population of 10,000 to 30,000. So um, Sierra Leone also is known based on the research is known to have the lowest medical density 
meaning that um, we have up to two doctors or two pharmacists serving a population of 100,000. So what's the impact of COVID-19 on the health service utilization? So this is one of the, the study that has been published, which says that um, the weekly mean hospital admission decreased by 14.7. But this, this study was conducted in 2020 during the first wave of the pandemic. So we have larger decrease of hospital admissions, mainly among males, more than females, and quant qualitative analysis shows both supply side factors and demand side factors. So for supply side factors, um, it's, it's, it showed that there was prioritization of essential services. And this is due to lessons learned from the Ebola experience. So there, there was also introduction of COVID-19 services, definitely, and pausing of elective care. So on the demand side factors, there was a fear of nosocomial infection and i'm sure now with the third wave of the infection um, the public knowing that there's increase in uh, covid19 cases and somehow increased mortality that will make them be really scared of acquiring hospital infections and of course the financial hardship has been identified so what's the impact of COVID-19 on people living with hepatitis? So the, first of all, the interruptions in provision of services, which is coupled with delays in implementing major programs such as the anticipated support from Gavi, um, has led to the delay in introduction of um, the bath dose. So that will, in, that will directly affect people living with hepatitis, definitely. That is if you have a mother affected with hepatitis giving birth to a child with hepatitis. So there's also possibility of vertical transmission increase due to reduction or disruption of antenatal care services. And that, that would have been more in the provinces um, when there's, um, there's interdistrict um, restriction, movement restrictions currently in the third wave, which will make more parents or mothers to give birth at home. But again, um, like if we were to compare the, the, the actual impact post pre-COVID and post-COVID, there won't be much differences because the challenges are always there, whether there's COVID-19 or not, because till now, whether there's COVID-19 or not, uh, mothers give birth at home and they, they, they do not seek antenatal care services that much in these marginalized communities because of distance, because of many other factors that come into play. And of course now because of um, fear of transmission of the infection or because of the myths that is surrounded with this corona infection. So in the past also, pre-COVID-19 pandemic, we have poor laboratory capacity. The, the laboratories in the government facility can all, only provide um, those basic laboratory investigations when it comes to diagnosing hepatitis and to provide liver function tests. But now because of diversion of resources to cater for um, her, COVID-19 um, testing and stuff like that, that might affect or delay um, diagnostic um, results for people living with hepatitis. But again, not all facilities are caring or catering for COVID-19 uh, 
um, patients. So we have other laboratories or other hospitals that cater for people with living with hepatitis, but of course they have to pay out of pocket for laboratory investigations and their drugs. And as we all know, civil society organizations had to suspend their community outreach programs and uh, community-based organizations also had to suspend their community outreach services which has disrupted advocacy disrupted community education and that of screening of people living with hepatitis or generally in the public so there's also reduced access to care, of course, due to distance from the healthcare facilities, which I've already mentioned, then fear of visiting hospitals also could hinder um, people living with hepatitis taking care of themselves. So we continue on the impact of COVID-19 on people living with hepatitis. Um, definitely there's more financial hardship or driving uh, patients to poverty when they have to pay high costs for their drugs and the continuous diagnostic uh, services. There's also delay in the formulating uh, the national strategic plan for hepatitis, which is also needed for the introduction of the bath dose. So that definitely indirectly affects people living with hepatitis. And also the delay in uh, releasing the standard treatment guideline for viral hepatitis, which has already been done, formulated, but yet it's not yet released in uh, at least in these community health posts for them, for these um, health practitioners there to educate themselves to take care of hepatitis patients. So what are the lessons that we've, we've learned so far when it comes to this pandemic or the epidemics that we've, we've um, noticed, we've experienced so far? So COVID-19 has massively, definitely disrupted, um, disrupted and exacerbated the, the shortcomings of our healthcare systems around whether it's in the public or the private sector. But then it has served as a catalyst for the needed transformation that we need to do in our healthcare system to make significant changes. So we, we actually succeeded in making significant changes at a very short period of time. And I'm sure many countries would have learned from that. So, but again, COVID-19 has further exposed health disparities, which tells us about the urgent need for us to take care of this subpopulation. Of course, this pandemic has learned, has taught us the importance of collaboration. And it has definitely taught us that we need to act fast because we've already acted fast. So, and digitalization technology is definitely the way to go. Countries that have matured technology were able to act very fast in the pandemic. It's also important that we strengthen definitely our supply chains, our health infrastructure, and to be able to prepare for further or upcoming future pandemics or epidemics. So of course, especially in the health, in the, um, in the African setting, we really need to strengthen our healthcare force, workforce, and to implement new care models that will um, actually improve patient healthcare outcomes and to revamp governance and policy to define shared goals and to improve decision making. Thank you very much. Um, and I wish we have a successful conference today. Thank you. Very